So in an effort to help you get caught up on Superman, I've decided that in addition to running over his origin story, I would provide you with his story arc from the New 52 that leads into Superman Truth. And so the first thing I want to do is start with the difference between action comics and Superman comics. When DC first launched the New 52, the first six issues of Justice League served as a linchpin of sorts in that in those issues, Batman, Green Lantern, The Flash, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, and Superman had all met for the first time. With that in mind, while DC hasn't provided us with a definitive answer to this, the relationship between Action Comics and Superman Comics seems to be that the first six or seven issues of Action Comics deal with Superman when he first arrives in Metropolis and begins acting as a superhero. The Superman Solo series, on the other hand, takes place several years after Action Comics, but immediately before his meeting with Justice League. Now, as the two would continue forward depicting Superman during these two different eras of his life, around issue number 10 or so of Action Comics, DC began to skip forward in time, so that by issue number 22, Action Comics caught up with Superman Comics, allowing both publications to tell a more complete story from two different directions. And so as it stands now, the Superman series focuses solely on Superman himself, with occasional appearances from his supporting cast. The Action Comics series focuses on Superman, but also includes larger roles from his supporting cast. Having said that, in terms of stories leading into the current events of Superman Truth, there really isn't a lot going on here. But if all you're looking for is to get into the Superman Truth event, the only required reading here is Jeff John's run titled Men of Tomorrow. Centering on the arrival of a character named Ulysses, the purpose of DC writing Men of Tomorrow was to set up the events for Superman Truth in that Men of Tomorrow introduced Superman's Super Flare ability, which allowed him to disperse all of his solar energy at once. While this would leave him in a weakened state requiring 24 hours of recuperation, the events of Superman Truth pick up with the fallout of this new ability in that Superman is almost completely powerless, he's been rejected from the Fortress of Solitude, meaning he's not Kryptonian, and his identity has been publicly revealed by a party or parties unknown. So the origin story of Superman is given to us in Action Comics issues 3, 5, 17, and Secret Origins number 1. And what we're going to find is that this story is actually going to be pretty short. The reason why is because in truth, the origin story of Superman is timeless, and that even if they don't know the intricacies of it, most people know the general idea that Superman was sent from Krypton as it was destroyed and arrived on Earth to become Superman. Picking up with Action Comics issue number 3, what we're told is that Jor-El, the father of Superman, had learned that Krypton was in the process of coming to an end due to the core destabilizing. And while he had presented his findings to the Hall of Science, which acted as the governing body, because there had been previous times when he declared that Krypton was ending but nothing had happened, he was completely ignored. Furthermore, among the people of Krypton, Jor-El was considered somewhat of a quack in that his constant declarations of the end of the world made him seem like somewhat of a lunatic. And so without anyone taking heed to his warning, the world of Krypton begins a process of destruction with its people unable to escape. With the end of the world imminent, the first suggestion from Jor-El is to have his wife and Kal-El enter the Phantom Zone, an interdimensional prison outside of space and time as a way to escape Krypton's destruction. Now one thing that DC passes over that I think is worth mentioning is that in previous continuities, Jor-El had actually discovered the Phantom Zone and used it as a way to imprison villains from Krypton. While in the Phantom Zone, individuals enter a ghostly form in the sense that they can neither interact with the outside universe or themselves. Instead, they're sort of frozen in time outside of all realities for the rest of eternity. Nonetheless, as is explained to us, in the Phantom Zone, Jor-El could use the time to attempt to engineer their escape and find a new home for themselves. However, as they prepare to enter, General Zod along with others who had previously been imprisoned attempt to exit the Phantom Zone and attack Jor-El. Jumping in and attacking Zod, Crypto the dog is actually pulled into the Phantom Zone and the access gate is shattered, meaning no one can enter or leave from that location. And turning their attention to a prototype rocket designed as a blueprint for saving the people of Krypton, Jor-El states that it was only designed to house animals and that neither himself nor his wife can actually enter it. And so because the Red Sun of Krypton suppresses the powers of Kryptonians, Jor-El places Kal-El inside the vessel and instructs the Brainiac AI to locate a planet with a yellow sun and a low gravity which would allow Superman to access his abilities and fly. 
And so with the ship taking off, Kal-El and his wife, Lara Lorvan, stay behind as the planet comes to an end. And from here, we transition to Earth, where we meet Jonathan and Martha Kent. While stranded in the winter due to a flat tire, we also learn that Martha and Jonathan had previously tried having a baby, but had been unable to conceive. However, in the midst of their discussion, the craft containing Superman actually sears through the atmosphere and lands next to them. Investigating the site, Martha and Jonathan find Kal-El, but after realizing that Superman's arrival would inevitably alert the military, Jonathan alongside Martha and Superman immediately leave. Now picking up with Secret Origins number one, we learn that following his adoption by the Kents, the Superman's abilities manifested at a very young age. While his heat vision had caused a good amount of damage to the property around him, the Kents also realized that the time would come when he needed to know about his heritage. While I haven't been able to find this particular moment outside of its being mentioned in Secret Origins, the Kents provide Superman with the blanket he was wrapped in after being sent from Krypton, which he then turns around and fashions into a cape. What we also learn is that as a child, Superman was taught to understand that his strength was something to be used as a force for good and never to be used in anger. And so when a group of kids pick a fight, Superman never actually engages them and instead is saved by Martha who runs the children off with a broom. Now in Action Comics issue number 17, DC establishes that prior to Superman moving to Metropolis to operate as a hero, both Martha and Jonathan were involved in a car wreck with a drunk driver. While Martha was immediately killed in the collision, Jonathan survived but sustained mortal wounds that would actually go on to kill him. Now I'd like you to pay special attention to what happens next. With his last wish being to die at home, Superman takes Jonathan Kent back to the farm in Smallville where he says that while Superman has vast powers, he can't be everywhere at once to save everyone. Now again, this is particularly important here because this will actually serve as Superman's motivation for becoming a superhero. But following the death of Jonathan Kent, we transition back to Secret Origins number one, where we learn that with Martha and Jonathan having died, Superman feels an almost complete lack of connection with the world around him. And where he initially finds himself in a dark place, both emotionally and mentally, his experience is being raised by Martha and Jonathan alongside words passed on to him through a message by his mother regarding what it means to love enable him to step into the role of becoming Superman. With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.